Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Shazad, so Sayyid Shazad Raza, and I come from Dubai, but originally from Tanzania. So I stay in Dubai. Uh, this is, I come for Ziyara. Alhamdulillah, I've been blessed to come for Ziyara. It's my fourth time. When I came the first time, I was like really small. I came with my mom and dad. Then second time, but Arbain, my second time. Last year, I came for the first time and it was like an addiction. I said, I have to go again. So there's no other better feeling than coming for the Ziyar of Abu Abdullah. And this was my second time, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so when I came first time, Alhamdulillah, I came for Ashura. And it was a different feeling completely. Uh, I was told by, by my parents that how Ashura is going to be, we are going there to give our pay our respects to Imam. So I was not really, I did not know, I didn't know much about exactly how it's going to be because I was really small. But last year when I came for Arba'in, I was shocked by seeing the love people give you. And what came into my mind was a thousand four hundred years back, there was no one for Imam standing. And the way today there are millions of people walking from Najaf to Karbala, the millions of people who want to enter the shrine of Imam, so it was a different picture completely. I never imagined it would have been like this. I thought we would just come, pray namaz and back home, that's all. But it was something else, it was unbelievable. So something completely new which I saw. Okay, so I, when I came for the first time, that was like 2008 or 9 for Ashura, I was really young. So it didn't bring a big change in my life. Then we came again in between with family again. So when I came again, that time it was off season. It was after Arbain, after Ashura, before Arbain, in between. So I was asking a lot of questions to my dad. What is Imam Hussein's story? What is exactly what happened? But I still, I was still learning. But last year, before I came for Arbain, I had gone back home for summer vacation, and I was with mom and dad, and I was just learning about Islam. And then I came back to Dubai for uni, and I did Muharram there. So when I was listening to the Madlises, I got really attracted and I thought that there is something I want to know more. And I had more questions and I said, I want to go and see. I see on the media, I see people who have gone for Arbain and come back. So I really wanted to learn more and I thought, let me give it a come and see how it is. So when I came last year for Ziyara, it completely changed me. That one Ziyara which I came last year, I learned a lot of things. Not, not just about Imam, but about Salah, for example, like Namaz, the importance of Namaz. I learned so many other things, the importance of Namaz is Shab. Then the love of Imam Hussein. So the things which Imam taught us, the sacrifice they gave, the love they gave us, all of that I saw with my own eyes. So it basically, that's what changed. That, brought, that increased the love for Imam Hussein, increased the love for Hazar Abbas in me. That one ziyara, which last year, that one walk basically from Najaf to Karbala, was amazing. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I don't know, I cannot even express in words the love there is for, for Ab Ab Abdullah. When a Zahir comes to Karbala, he should forget himself. He should forget the world. This is a few days he has been blessed to come to the Holy Land of Karbala, of Najaf. We get blessed to go to Kathmir and Samara. Maximum 10, 14 days, two weeks, that's a very short period of time. So when a person should come here, he should forget his world. He should give his world away only for Islam, for the love of Imam Hussein, for the love of Imam Ali and all the other ziyarats we get blessed over here. Okay, so Karbala is, should never be a vacation. Karbala is a place where you should come and grief. So when I go back to Dubai and I get back to my daily routine, each day of my life, last year, until this year, each day of my life, I waited for getting a chance to come again. And each day before I go back to sleep or when I wake up, I have that feeling that I spent really less time there. So even if I stay my lifetime or as much as, I, as, much as love you give, I think it's less. You can stay here for entire life, you can stay here for a month, two months, but it'll never be enough. So when I go back, I always have that, that missing, I, uh, that there's something missing, something less. So I want to come again. Maybe Sakina, alayhi salam. Even though she's not in Karbala, she's buried in Sham. 
but I really feel sad and uh, cannot express the problem she went through. Uh, she is like, I come, of course, I have been to Syria once, alhamdulillah, but whenever I come to Karbala and I go, I go to the shrine of Imam Hussein, I give him condolences for his daughter, Bibi Sakina. But there is a lot of, it's really hard for a father to sacrifice a four-year-old child. So this place is heaven on earth. I've always come here and I've never left unsatisfied. The only thing that uns or I can say I'm unhappy about is that I'm leaving this place. That's the only thing that bugs me, that it's time has come, I have to go back. Get back to normal life again. But it's never been, or it will never come, I'm with guarantee I can say that a person comes here for so the ziyarat of uh, Babi Allah and he's not satisfied. There is no, there is no hajat you pray for, or there is no, there is no problem in your life which comes here which is not sorted. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Muhammad Zahir. I'm from London. I'm 24 years old and I work at a law firm in London. Uh, I'm unmarried, inshallah soon. And uh, yeah, alhamdulillah. Inshallah. Motivation to come to Karbala is purely love. It's the love of Imam Hussein, it's the love of his sacrifice, what he's given for us. For us to come to pledge allegiance to him, to give condolences for his family, for his uh, sisters, for his children, for everything. Imam Hussein gave everything. It's the least we can do to come, to give our condolences and to pledge allegiance to not only him, but the Imam of our time. My brother was the first to come. He came about three or four years ago and I really wanted to come. Because I've, I've had this desire for the past seven, eight years that inshallah, as soon as I have the income, as soon as I have whatever else, inshallah, I want the invitation to come, to come. And alhamdulillah, this year, I've been invited twice. So alhamdulillah, I feel really happy that I've come in the less busy time so I could spend proper time with the Imam Hussein sitting between the Zari of Imam Hussein and Habib ibn Muzahir. And alhamdulillah, I've been invited on Arba'een. So I didn't get the same proximity, but the connection is amazing, alhamdulillah. You know the sacrifice Hazrat Abbas gave. So as soon as you see the dome, you start. It starts to hurt you. You say, Assalamu alaikum, ya kamra bani Hashim. You know the sacrifice he gave. You know the reaction when the Abbas didn't return to the women, to the children. And then once you've done ziyarat of Hazrat Abbas, when you come into Bain al Haramain and you see Imam Hussein, again, you just break. It's just so much. Imam gave so much. And we want to come and give our condolences. It's just absolutely heartbreaking. Personally, it's the story of Ali Akbar that always gets to me. That I'm the oldest son of my father. That I understand the relationship, the love that you have for your father. The sacrifice that if anything comes to your father, you want to be there, you want to protect him. I, un I can connect to that kind of relationship. And understanding what the sacrifice must have been for the Imam. I don't have any children, but you can appreciate that the loss of Ali Akbar really hurt the Imam. And so that story always, that the, the, you start the narration and I will start crying. You learn so much in terms of, they say that he was the image of the Prophet in his religious attitude, in his personality, and also in his abadah and everything. And it, that's what you can learn, that you can try and emulate these people in your ikhlaq, in trying to better yourself through your namaz, through your salah, in how you treat other people. And I think that's such an important lesson, that when you come here, take away these personalities, these jewels, that you learn how to connect better with your Lord, you learn how to connect with the Imam of your time, and you connect better with other people, that you learn that ikhlaq. You see all of these pictures of the shrines from the outside, of the Zari room, of everything, and you, you see the beauty. But until you come, you never understand the majesty that is so big, and there's so many people, and all of them are yearning, they're crying, and they're doing everything. People will walk days they don't know when they're going to get food. They don't know where they're going to sleep at night, but they're coming because for the love of the Imam. And that is the amazing thing, the majesty, the environment, and the, the connection you feel here is just incredible. You can't experience it unless you come. So the first, it was amazing. Like, Alhamdulillah, I got to really feel that connection. I got to sit next to the Imam. I got to do all of the supplications, the du'as that I wanted to. But this time, it was so much more heartbreaking. That we did a jalous throughout the night of Arba'in 
and just before Fajr, we come towards the shrine of Aba Abdullah. You turn the corner, you see the shrine, your heart breaks. I just start to cry. That there's so much sorrow. That on Arba'in, you know what the women went through. You know what the family went through. That you just cry. You cry. It's heartbreaking. It's just different coming during these special days. I think it was different. So the first one, uh, there was a lot of ibadah. There was a lot of connecting with God, connecting with the Imam of our time. This time it was a lot about connecting with just the Imam, Imam Hussein. That you're reliving kind of what his family went through, walking to Karbala. You're connecting with his history and it just feels more alive. You feel that connection more. And I really feel the power and the connection this time. Whenever I strap into the shrine, it just lifts you and you just connect so much more. Uh, personally speaking, for a long time I struggled finding a job. And I applied, applied, applied. I'd done my university, alhamdulillah, I'd done my studies. I kept on applying, nothing was coming. I was working voluntarily and in February, before I came, I decided, okay, I'm gonna leave this voluntary now. And inshallah, whatever happens after I return from Ziara, it will happen. Before I even came to Karbala, I got an amazing job offer. And alhamdulillah, that's just gone better and better. And that's why I've come again to again, because you have that ishq, that desire to come back. And also because I, alhamdulillah, I've received so much from that first Ziara that you wanna come back again to connect with the Imam again, to take away more and more lessons from him. During Arbain, everything is submission. The way you're walking, your feet hurt, you're tired, it's very hot. And you see, it's November now, even then when the sun comes out, it's very hot. But you're coming for the submission because of Allah, because of the Imam Hussein, and because of the Imam of our time, that you're pledging your allegiance with every step. And then when you're praying on time, in the desert, after you've already been hot, after you're already thirsty, again, it's that submission. And you will never feel sajdas like you do when you're doing the walk because your feet hurt so much. But when you do the sajda, you feel amazing. <laughs> And everyone is just that constant submission. You don't necessarily know where you're going to sleep at night. You don't necessarily know where you're going to get your meals from. But you know that I'm going for Imam Hussein, everything will be sorted. And Alhamdulillah, it is. I can genuinely say that there was nothing that I needed that didn't come to me. If I was thirsty, soon there would be water coming my way. If I felt I couldn't go on, I'd find a companion that would walk with me. Alhamdulillah, everything you could need, it comes to you. There's no doubt in my mind that the same will happen to anyone else that walks. Off season, it's an amazing connection that you can sit there, you can give your condolences, you can do your du'as, you can just connect with the Imam just sitting there and the tranquility and the connection of everyone else doing the ibadah is just amazing. I can tell you that after the first time I left, I still remember Karbala all the time. I would have dreams about coming back to Karbala and they intensified when I was coming to Arbain, that I dreamed that I was in the streets of Karbala, that I dreamed that I was inside of the harams. And inshallah, even before I left for Arba'in, I made the plan that inshallah, Ashura, I'll be here again. So it's that constant commitment that inshallah, I'm making the niyyah now. I'm putting my money where my mouth is now. And inshallah, I will do whatever I can to return to my imam. Mm -hmm.